So last week we dealt with calculating pH of a strong acid. And also pH of a strong base, POH. And just to recap, we defined pH equals negative logarithm of the proton concentration. We defined POH as the negative logarithm of the hydroxide concentration. And we also had the relationship between pH and pOH, where we said pH plus pOH equals 14. That's, that's, this, this 14 is true for water. It's not true for any other uh, solvents that we might use. And uh, we said this holds true if we have, for example, a strong acid, let's say HCl, which basically completely dissociates into H plus plus Cl minus. And we said in this case, because it completely dissociates, if we start with one molar of the hydrochloric acid, we basically get one molar concentration of protons and one molar concentration of chloride ions. So what we basically did was we said what we have here in terms of protons is more or less the same as what we started with in terms of the acid. So that would be a very strong acid that totally dissociates. Yeah, you're happy with that? And actually, the, the, the equations that uh, you really need to learn is this bit here. So that's, that's the thing that I would put on my cheat sheet, uh, which you're not supposed to take into any um, assessments or anything like that. Should I quickly tell you something about this, the, the assessments for this module? It might be a, probably a good uh, opportunity to do that. So the first assessment in this BI-308 module is the assessed practical in week eight. So coming soon. Uh, this is a practical that you are going to do. You have the manual already. It's the spectrophotometer, uh, spectrophotometry uh, practical. You've got the manual. We will do a pre-lab session for that, so you get <coughs> detailed instructions. You go into the lab on your, on your respective day. You don't need a lab partner because... You will do this practical on your own, and you will perform the experiment. You will do some measurements. You will then write down your results. You have to do a graph. You have to do a little bit of data analysis. And you do this writing down in the practical. I will collect the sheets then in the practical and mark them. So you don't have to do a lengthy write-up with God knows what. Uh, the focus of this practical is really, can you do accurate measurements? Can you do accurate pipetting? Do you know how to use a spectrophotometer? Can you follow the instructions? And do you know what the data actually mean? So that's this uh, practical. 
That's this assessment. In week, uh, you can bring in all the resources that you want for that. So no need to stress. Bring your resources. In week 12, we have an in-class test, which means in-class. This will cover what we have done so far. And it is a 45-minute test. It's problem-solving. It's not multiple guess, uh, multiple choice. You have to do calculations. It will be done in a lecture theater, not in this one, somewhere else. In this assessment, then, again, I will collect the, the, the scripts and mark them. And my plan is to do this as an um, open book test as well. So you can bring in your resources. Please don't bring in your phones. You can't phone a friend. Um, last year, I said, please turn your mobile phones off. And halfway through the test, I heard a very well-known and loved voice called Siri <laughs> saying, sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah, I wasn't too impressed with that. But you can bring in your, your, your notes, whatever you want, basically, for that. Yeah? <coughs> the, this, this test will be pretty similar to an actually exam question. And I think I put on the, on the summary sheet that uh, I uh, emailed you the link to uh, there is also something about previous exam questions, so it's, it's worth looking at it, because last year people said, oh, um, I really didn't get, I, I didn't expect a question that complex. So have a look at the exams, at previous exams, so that you have at least a bit of a feel for what the assessment and also the exam in the summer might look like. Okay? Happy with that? Fantastic. <coughs> okay, so let's go back to pH. We said what we've done last week, that was for strong acids and strong bases. Where we said the dissociation is basically 100%. But what happens if the dissociation, if our acid does not dissociate to 100%? If it is only partial dissociation? Oh boy, are we screwed then? Right? So, if not 100%, if not total dissociation, what do we do? Well, first of all, just let's simply go for an example. Let's say we have an acid, HA. We throw that into water. And let the acid work in water. What will we get? Well, we will get H3O+. Plus plus A minus. And we know that this H3O plus, that is just a sort of uh, artistic license. We know that there is far more water around this one uh, proton. Uh, but we just write it like that. And what we can do now is we can set up the equation for a chemical equilibrium. And uh, chemical equilibrium, we can write uh, 
Ka. This K stands for dissociation constant. Why is it abbreviated as K? Well, because the people who sort of developed these concepts were mostly from the German-speaking area. And in German, you spell constant with a K. Sorry, guys. And the A indicates that we are talking about an asset. And this Ka is defined as the concentration of the H3O+. Plus. And uh, to indicate that it is a concentration, I put that into the square brackets. So the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of HA times the concentration of water. And what I probably should say is when we look at these concentrations, we need to wait until everything has basically stabilized itself. And I come back to that in a minute. So I write this as sort of EQ. You sometimes find it as EQ, which means when the system has reached an equilibrium, when everything is, when, when nothing is moving anymore. Well, I come back to that in a minute. You probably also notice that there is a, a little bit of a theme here. What you have in the numerator here, that is all the stuff that is a product here. What you have in the denominator, that's this one here, that is the reactants. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. Oh, sorry, I thought you just got up. Do. You did? Okay, yeah, okay. No more details, thank you. <coughs> <coughs> so that's Ka. And sometimes it is quite cumbersome to um, deal with Ka, and therefore the chemists have introduced another P, and they've defined as PKA, equals negative log of Ka. Okay, and I want you to remember that PKA is the negative logarithm of Ka. And when I talk logarithm, I mean logarithm to the basis of 10. Okay, so far, so good. What we can do, actually, is we can say, right, how does that help us? Now, this Ka, this dissociation constant, this guy here, dissociation constant. This helps us to figure out how much of this acid is actually dissociated. Is it a strong acid that totally falls apart, or is it a very weak acid that does not deliver a lot of protons? And that is what this Ka actually tells us. So, how come? Okay, 
Let's say we have HA and this dissociates into H plus plus A minus. I can't be bothered to write the water. It's just you know, water. And usually the concentration of the water doesn't really change. What was the concentration of water? Does anyone remember? What was the concentration of water? No? No? Concentration of water <coughs> was 55.55 molar. Anyone remember that? Oh, yes, he says. Okay, good. We did this calculation a while ago. So go back to the video and have a look at that. So this 55.55 molar doesn't change, really. OK, so let's say we have, we look at the start. Oops, where's it gone? Start. And we look at the concentration of each of these components. So, when we start, we have a concentration of, let's say, 100 millimolar. 100 millimole per liter. Okay? And right at the beginning, what is our concentration of the protons? Right at the beginning. Zero. Excellent. What is our concentration of A minus? It's also zero. Because this guy, this acid, has not dissociated into anything. Okay, let's say at the end. And in this particular case, Let's assume at the end we have 90 millimole per liter. <coughs> so 10% of our acid is actually dissociated. How much of the protons do we have? 10? Why 10? You're absolutely right. But why? Well, we started with 90. Well, we started with 100 of the acid. We still have 90 of the acid left of the HA. So the difference between 100 and 90 that is obviously what has dissociated, and that gives us our protons. How much of the A minus do I have? Ten. It's the same number. Ten millimole per liter. That's the same number as the protons. Because each molecule of acid dissociates into one proton, one, acid, uh, one A minus. Okay, now let's write the equilibrium equation for that. Ka equals, it's our proton concentration, so that's 10 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, times, that's the, acid, uh, that, that's the A minus, 10 times 10 to the minus 3. 3 molar. And what is the acid? Well, that's the 90 that we have at the end. 90 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay? Happy with that? This is basically how you look at an equilibrium constant. And... 
we can obviously we can deal with that. The 10 to the minus 3 cancels out. And we have what do we have? 100 times 10 to the minus 3 molar squared divided by 90. And that gives us 0 0.1 one divided by 90 molar squared, and that is, what is that? Uh, 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar squared, and one molar cancel out, so it would be molar. 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. That would be our um, equilibrium constant. And now we can, let me write this on another page. So we have 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And that's our Ka. And now we can calculate the pKa for this. pKa equals minus log Ka. Now we can't deal with the molar, so we usually just ignore it. As long as everything is in molar, we can ignore that molar. And we get equals minus log of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3. Can anyone do that, please, quickly, on your calculator? What would you get for pKa? It's roughly 3. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah, it's 2.95. Yeah. The 0 0.05, that's um, because you've, got, you've been a good man, and you get that for the weekend. Good. Okay, it's roughly three. Yeah. Okay. So what does this actually tell us? PKA is three. At the moment, it doesn't tell us a lot, does it? What, does, what on earth does a pKa of 3 mean? Okay, let's do another acid. HA. H plus plus A minus. We do exactly the same thing. Start H A. This time we start again with 100 millimolar. What is H plus? It's still zero. A minus? Still zero. And now we say at the end we have 99 millimolar left of the HA. How much is the H plus? That, sorry? One. A minus is also one. Now, big question. <coughs> is this <coughs> acid, does this dissociate more or less than the previous one? It's less. Yeah? So this acid here dissociates less than the previous one. Which one is the stronger acid? Uh, 
The first one. So our first one, H A, dissociated into H plus, and we got 10 millimolar of the protons. Our second one dissociated, and we got one millimolar of protons. Which one is stronger in terms of producing more protons? The first one. This is the stronger one. So that's the stronger acid. Absolutely right. That is, that here is a weaker acid. Sorry about my handwriting, but uh, the, it's not terribly stable, this, 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 this thing. But I, I guess you can read it anyway. Okay, let's just simply calculate the pKa for the weaker acid. So, Ka equals, what was our proton concentration? It was 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. <laughs> wow, that, that's, that's quite spectacular. And the A minus concentration is also 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And the acid concentration at the end was 99 times 10 to the... It's not a good day today. give up. 99 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Again, we can cancel one of them. So we have 1 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 99. And we have one molar left. What gives 1 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 99? Anyone? Let's see if I can do that in my head. 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5. Is that right? Yeah? Does anyone say anything else? Is it right? 1.0. 1.0. Okay, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 1.01. .01. Okay, the 01 you get for Christmas. Okay, so 1 times 10 to the minus 5. Is it right? And you said you don't like maths. You're cheating, yeah? No, no, that's fine. It's, uh, it's not cheating, it's uh, outsourcing. So pKa of that, what's the pKa? Five. Aha. I want this... Go away, you stupid wrist guard. <coughs> Every time. Oh, well. So, we said for the stronger acid...
we got a pKa of 3 for the weaker acid. We got a pKa of 5. Can you come up with a rule? The higher the pKa, the higher the pKa, the the weaker the acid. Absolutely right. Eh. Okay, give me a couple of minutes so that I can sort that out. Ha! Doesn't help me yet. Bless you. How did I do that? The higher pKa, the weaker the acid. Okay. I pause.